Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Not Becca, Katie9POK here, and today we are doing part two of my How to Solder series. So without further ado, let's roll that awesome intro video. Alright, so I soldered in all of the resistors, and if you look really closely at the board, you can see that the solder joints right here, and right here, and up there, and over there, and so on, they're really close to these solder joints in the future that are right there. And I want to make sure that they're not fused, I'm not sure if they should be, but when I was looking at the board before I was soldering them, they were actually like really close to each other, almost as if they were supposed to be fused, but I'm not sure about that because you'd think they would have just connected them. So I'm just going to double check real quick, take a nice lens, a oh, lens, like a magnifying glass. I don't know why I said lens. Take a nice magnifying glass, check, make sure none of them are fused. So let's check off the resistors and move on to the next step. Alright, select two of the discarded resistor lead clippings, of which I have many. Form both leads to make jumper wires having a 0.3 span. Alright. Move the board off to the side for a second. Slide this page. Now we have our jumper leads, and it, they want them to be this long. Okay. So, if you look at the board... You can see right there it says jumper one it is backwards and it's a, like half this length so I think they wanted them to be 0.3 inches long just to give you you know nice length to make it with but really you don't have to worry about how long it is it's not that big of a deal <laughs> so we have a little little bendy jumper wire but it's in and that does give us enough length to solder and also trim. That seems right. Okay, we're gonna put a jumper wire in jumper two, solder them in, and see what happens. Since I've never done a kit that asked me to do this before. Ooh, this one's gonna be bent too. <laughs> Apparently I'm not that great with jumper wire, so I just cut that. Yikes. We try again. This is not the easiest of all things, so I guess I'm learning as I attempt to teach. You know, I'm glad I saved all of the resistor... resistor? Yeah, the resistor leads, instead of just a few of them, because it turns out I'm going through a lot just trying to get good jumper wires. That's sweet. That's really nice. The other one's not so great, but like, look at that. That's really good looking. Give those a second to cool off. You can trim their ends. Alright, our two jumper wires are installed. She's starting to look populated. Locate the electrolytic capacitor. That thing. Important note, electrolytic capacitors are polarized devices and must be inserted with respect to pol polarity. The style used in this kit has radial leads. Both leads exit from one end of the device body. This capacitor's plus mounting hole is noted on the parts placement diagram. If the markings on the capacitor body are unclear, the plus lead is always the longer of the two. So that's helpful that the positive lead is always the longer of the two. And then also if you look at the capacitor, this band right here, it has lines in it that is negative and it points right to this lead. So this line is going to indicate this is the negative lead, the shorter one, and then the longer lead is the positive. Now when we come, we're putting it in... C1, C1, which is right here, and if you look at the board down there, there's a plus right there, so we're going to take the longer lead, put it in there, and the shorter lead in the other side. 
It doesn't go down all the way, but I'm not going to like be super rough with it. I'm just going to nice and gently put it in there. And we solder. The thing with um, any part, like specifically with this capacitor, you don't want to force it. You don't want to use a whole bunch of force to be repetitive. Just be gentle be careful take your time with it if you're too rough with it you could always break the component you might not have a replacement and that's where the real problems begin now we need the two monolithic capacitors monolithic versus electrolithic electrolithic electro it is lithic okay electrolytic oh monolithic electrolytic interesting and there's actually three of them Apparently I can't speak. It's been a bit of a long day. The capacitors are going to be installed at location C2 through C4. Now, when it comes to these capacitors, we need to be careful with them because, you know, that's what we do. So I'm going to put them in and I'm going to make it so that the numbers are facing forward so that it helps. I'm going to put the one with extra writing in C3 and when you put it in, don't make it float but don't push it too hard. So same thing with the other capacitors, be nice and gentle when you're putting them in. Now polarity is not important with these, and even though it doesn't specifically say it in the book, I can tell because the leads are the same length. When the leads are a different length, it's a big tell that their polarity is important. Now, nice and gently, we put it in, and it is floating just a little bit, not a big deal. I'd rather have it be floating a little bit than have it be broken, considering I don't think Dad has any more of these. All right, lettuce solder. And I did just say lettuce. Seems to me like we're getting closer to the end with every step. Wow, it's almost like that's always how it is. Right, we have our capacitors done and we have our resistors done along with our two gorgeous jumper wires. Now it is time for the diode. Note that the diode is a polarized device. It's also much smaller than you might think it is. Now specifically, the cathode band must be installed as indicated by the parts placement diagram. So the cathode band is gonna be this black band on this side of the diode, it's not focusing, but the diode's small, so I'm not expecting it to. Now this is going at D1, which is going to be, it's D10, hmm. Cause that says D10 and this says D1. Hmm, it says to put it at D1. But there's nothing that goes to D10 considering it's the only diode that's not an LED. I think I should just put it in D10. Or do you think that would be a bad idea? I think I'm gonna put it in D10, and if I'm wrong, that's my bad. And I'll deal with the consequences. Okay, now if you look at the cathode band, which is black, and you look at the board, you'll notice that the symbol is an arrow and then a line. You wanna line up the band with the line and the diode's going to go just like that. But this diode is made of glass, which means that it's a little more fragile than your average diode. Or at least, I don't know, I feel like every other diode is made of glass. Anyway, be careful with it. Don't stress it. Nobody likes to be stressed, especially not diodes. So don't put too much pressure on it. Be really gentle. Now this may be a bit of overkill, but... I'd rather be too nice than not nice enough. All right, I have put it in well enough. Uh, the thing with resistors is they're really easy to put in because you bend them, at least for me, the way that you bend them is super simple. But that's okay, this diode doesn't need to be perfect. Oh, yeah, art. That's really gonna bother me. It's fine. 
It doesn't have to be perfect. Alright guys, it's day two, and we are back at it again. I put all my components in a little bag, put everything in the nice big bag that this kit came with. Super easy to pack up and get ready for next day. It only took me about, I don't know, five minutes to clean it all up. Now, I need to get everything out and organize it again. And I've got quite a bit done yesterday a lot of soldering a lot of putting stuff in not a lot of super interesting super complicated stuff but based on the components looks to me like there's going to be some fun stuff ahead all right let's go back to the page we were on wow i did get really far and next is the transistors which are these things, as far as I know. Yep. So these little black plastic things with three legs are gonna be our transistors. And we gotta solder them onto our board, all 10 of them in a nice little row. Now the thing with transistors, if you look at their legs, you can see that they're all three of them in a nice line. But if you look at the board, you can see that the holes are in, I don't know, like a V shape. One of the legs is a lot farther forward than the other ones. So before we solder the transistors, we have to bend their legs. A little bit like how this one is bent. Bend out the middle ones and then leave the outer ones straight. And then we put them in their holes. As with any other component, we need to be nice and gentle and it's not a huge deal if they're floating. Alright, so I have them all in, as you can see, a nice little army of Jack Skellingtons, as I've taken to calling them. And now, we solder. Now, things to remember about soldering. If you're using lead wick like I am, not completely lead, but partially lead, and by lead I mean like, you know, the poisonous thing, because I tend to call graphite lead as well, you need to remember to wash your hands afterwards because you don't want to poison yourself. Um, so, you're touching the solder, just remember wash your hands before you, uh, where you eat. This is actually one of the general test questions. It was like, what danger can soldering pose or something along those lines? And it was like, lead in solder can contaminate food if conditions aren't clean enough or whatever, if you don't wash your hands. I don't remember specifically, it's been a hot minute since I took my general. And before you ask, no, I have not gotten on the air yet. It's in the list of things to do. It's just a very long list. So I have soldered all of my transistors. Now the thing with these solder joints is they're all really close together. And so I'm just gonna take a second and check, make sure I didn't create any solder bridges, make sure I'm not connecting anything that shouldn't be connected. Okay. 
All right, it looks like we're all good. And so we grab our pen, check off all 10 of these, and we go to the next step. So the next step is going to be our 10 red LEDs, which have scattered slightly, but they're all here. And they are in fact polarized. So the cathode lead is going to be the shorter lead, which for this LED is on the left. And it's going to go, oh really? Now oh, this is interesting. This is something I didn't know. It's also indicated by a small flat area on the otherwise rounded air thing of the device. Which means that even if you accidentally cut the leads to both be the same length, if you look at the very round LED, you can see that it's actually slightly flattened on that side, which is very helpful. Now, they're going to be installed in location CR0 through CR9, and they all need to be this mounted at the same elevation above the PC board surface. The leads of the diodes are shouldered. These should set how high the LEDs sit above the PC board. Now here's the question. If there is specific, ooh. So if we look at the board and we look at the LED legs, first they said that the LED legs were shouldered. So if you look really closely, you can see that it's actually a little tiny bit thicker in specific spots. And it's just thick enough that it's not going to fit through the holes. And so they'll all sit at the right height. And then I was wondering how we were supposed to know which polarity to put them in. But the circles on the board for the LEDs have a slightly flat side, which we will align with the slightly flat side of the LED, which would be the cathode side. So we put them in and we solder. Now there's one thing I did notice about the LEDs. And you'll see that they are, they are all flush with the board right now. And they're actually not supposed to be there. They're supposed to be, if I can get this one to come up, supposed to be sitting like that. But the shoulders aren't quite big enough and so they like to fall in. So I'll have to be careful about that when I start soldering. Seems to me that the most logical course of action for these LEDs, just because they have to be a specific height, is to do them one at a time. So that is how I will do it. Though it isn't quite I'm efficient. Don't mind me, folks. I'm just having trouble trying, figuring out a way to get this diode to not fall. Because they said specifically that they had to be the exact height. So I want to make sure that I do that because it seems like it's important for the project itself. All right, I've successfully soldered one of the LEDs and you can see that it is in fact floating as it should. Now we move on to the next 10. As I try to solder with a cold soldering iron, <coughs> that's not turned on. <coughs> now they're not going to be perfect just because the LED shoulders on the leads are not like the right thickness, so it's sliding right through the holes. This could be a LED problem, this could be a um, circuit board problem. It's not a huge deal, I just have this. Oh my god, that was supposed to be epic. You know what I'll do? I'll take this and I'll speed it up. We have this super technical um, piece of equipment here, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the LED, put it in, get it to be approximately the same height as the other ones. So I want to make that one go in more. Is that an unreasonable expectation? Probably. Let's do things unreasonably. Perfect. 
So if you look right there, you can see that I did in fact connect them together. So now we fix that problem. Oh, this is gonna take forever. See, this is where perfection is not important, but I'm still going to do it. This is where I give advice and then don't take it. So, follow my advice, kids. <laughs> Um, that took a long time. It was very excessive, but I've done it and it's perfect. And now we do the other seven. See you in three hours. Actually, no, not three hours. She lied. Um, this is where this video ends about sometime next week, week and a half, something like that. You will get your next Not Becca video, which is not in three hours, and that should be the completion of what has happened. So today, we did diodes, and then we did more diodes, and then we found out that the diodes were a little scuffed, and then we did diodes. <laughs> so if you enjoyed that video, like, comment, subscribe, do all that cool, fun YouTube stuff, Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.